Today I want to show you how to build this custom crawfish trap. And this is a design I've been developing for quite some time. And it's working out really well. So take a look. This is a four entrance modified pillow trap. And it's completely handmade. I'm going to show you step by step all the way through how to build this sucker. But it's got some pretty cool mods on it. So all the way around, it sits on the bottom, nice and flat. On the top, if you saw this uh, little black strip, that is a bungee cord and that keeps your access hatch shut. So you can use a clip. I like using bungee. Good size access panel. Do any repairs, customization, putting your bait in or uh, pulling out your crawfish or whatever else you've trapped. Works out really well. So this isn't really like anything else I've seen out there and uh, I think you'll like it. You'll want to have one of these. Now the reason I'm building these and the reason I've been working on design is that I've got a lot of messages about people don't really have access to the same products and uh, really the same shipping services that we do here in America. So, love the factory stuff. I support it all the way. But sometimes you're just in an area that you can't get a hold of that stuff. But this is hardware cloth. Uh, this is 19 gauge uh, galvanized. This is half inch. You can use quarter inch. These are J-clips right here. And we use these to make rabbit cages, uh, traps of different sorts. These are all things you can find at a hardware store. So the idea is that if you have the materials, you can have yourself an incredibly durable, grade A trap that will outlast you and catch one heck of a lot of crawfish. So uh, let's do this thing. So aside from knowing how to put it together, you are going to need a few things to build this. Uh, first and foremost, gloves are a good thing to have. Some of this metal can be quite sharp, especially on some of the uh, last steps where you have to invert these funnels you'll want to have gloves to do so. A couple different sets of pliers work out really well, so I use those to force the metal back. I have some wire nippers, and that's for actually cutting the wire. Sometimes I'll use an angle grinder, but uh, most of the time, it's just little bitty nippers, one at a time. I also have a specialized set of pliers right here, and these are for the J-clips. And uh, those are typically $13. You can buy them online or at the hardware store, and you just have to buy them once, and they'll go a long way. Other than that, you have the actual J-clips themselves. Each trap uses about 40 J-clips, which uh, comes out to about 60 cents per trap as far as these fasteners go. Uh, the galvanized steel that I use is a uh, half inch, and this is 19 gauge. And it comes in 10 foot rolls by two foot. Each one of these rolls for about $13 will make three traps. So if you make these in sets of three, uh, the price per trap comes down to under five dollars, which is one heck of a bargain uh, for a quality trap. So, works out really, really well. I have a couple extra things here and there that I use, and you might see them come into play. Uh, there in the end, whenever I'm messing with these small pieces of sharp metal, I like to have a magnet, and uh, this is for kind of cleanup. So, depending on what kind of workshop and work area you got, it's always good to pull all the metal out of the ground or wherever you're working. But Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the piece of hardware cloth that we're gonna be using is gonna be 40 inches by 24. And it works out pretty well because you don't actually have to have a measure tape to do this. So 40 inches will be the long piece, and uh, that's effectively 80 of these squares since we're using half inch. This is 24 inches wide, so that's 48 squares. Count them out, works out real well. Make sure you've got all the sharp stuff and all the protrusions clipped off, and after that, it's just a matter of folding and adding J clips. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put this thing together. So this is the lengthwise right here. We're going to make these two ends meet right in the middle as well as we can. And this is the point where uh, having an assistant can really help out. Uh, sometimes you can use a uh, zip tie just for a temporary hold. The idea is that we're going to take the two ends and using the J-clips, we're going to fasten them together. Uh, we don't want to overlap at all. The squares will not overlap. Just end to end with the J-clip keeping them together. I'm going to skip two boxes every time all the way down until I have pretty much made this a tunnel. All right, so that's our first step. Let's go ahead and get started. Fires and a handful of J-clips. Now, these are cool little fasteners. It takes a little while to uh, get used to them. I expect to mess a few of them up as you learn this, so at least they're real cheap. 
but that's how, how it works. All right, so it's got a curved in, the J part, that's gonna go on your two time. That's what you're gonna hook up underneath the piece of wire that you're going to be fastening. And that's going to bring that around and curl it up into a loop. And they work really well with joining piece, two pieces of metal and it also allows a little bit of freedom of movement. So it works out really well in the construction and for hinges, so for our access panel. So let's see if we can do this. We'll go ahead and speed this up so you don't have to sit there and listen to me for too long. So let's see if we can't get the first one going. Having a third hand is really handy right here. So learning the nuances. There's two different ways to go about this thing. All right. With the half inch, a lot of times you can bring your pliers straight up through, down through the mesh, and uh, you can actually swing them around and get it caught up under there. And then you're going to press down, give it all you got, and let go. So there you go. Sealed all the way through. Uh, if you're having problems with that, what I'll do a lot of times is actually go ahead and sandwich this and you can go ahead and squish the metal down a bit but bring these two together just like that and with that smaller profile you can uh, clip it from the top and you have a lot more success with those J clips it's just a lot easier so it's just up to you fiddle around with it practice makes perfect make some errors have some fun All right, one more, and your end's gonna come up at, a, at an odd, but you wanna make sure that the end is secured all the way down. All right, so check it out. Got a bit of a tunnel. It's pretty good. All right, time for the next step. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is this seam right here. You put it right directly in the center. And what you're going to want to do is fold down the sides all the way down and bring these together. And you want to make sure that it's symmetrical all the way across. But we're going to go ahead and make this into a seam and this into a seam with this directly at the top. Okay, it can be off just a little bit, but this mesh has got to line up with the other side. So, let me bring the two ends together. And you can count out the boxes, or you can approximate. And it just kind of comes down to uh, the OCD thing again. So, do a little bit of bending. Get where I like it. And then again with the J clips. All the way across. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and uh, clip right here on the two edges because those are actually going to invert and become the entrances for the crawfish. And so anything smaller than that is going to have to be undone whenever you do invert and make the cones. So you might as well not even mess with it. And there's a chance, depending on uh, how unforgiving this metal is, that I'll actually have to remove that one as well so you might want to give yourself as much room as possible until you get really good at it because it's going to take some muscle to complete the trap with this material at least now you can make this out of other stuff but for me turtles and gars and everything else this works out really well now, i'm using half inch mesh for a couple different reasons this is strictly a crawfish trap here in Texas. And I want to make sure that that is understood uh, by those of y'all that are watching and 
by anybody that comes out and traps with me. And it makes it real simple for the kids. Uh, stuff with a big mesh, you can only pull crawfish out of those. Because we have some strict guidelines on what a minnow trap is and what a crawfish trap is. And so I'm not actually allowed to pull perch uh, or anything but crawfish out of this type of trap due to that. So it makes it real simple. And so the minnows can move in and out. And that works out. I don't have to worry about bycatch, which is a good thing. And it's a real durable size. Last one for this side, you crimp that off. So at this point, with one side crimped and uh, the other open, we're gonna go ahead and invert these two funnels. And that's gonna give us a little more structure, a little more rigidity, and uh, working with a really, really heavy metal like this, it's going to allow us to kind of form those up before this thing gets closed in. Works out pretty well. You will want your gloves at this point. A pair of pliers works out, two people, Somebody with some muscle, that's not really me, but uh, a little bit of finesse. Should be able to get it after a while. It does take some practice. So we we'll go ahead and start off with the uh, larger opening side. So I don't look like too much of a fool. But to start out with, I'm going to want to open up and round out that opening a little bit. And uh, each one is going to give you a fit in its own way. So. Uh, bear with me and it's going to resist a little bit of persistence a little bit of practice and there's always a possibility I've got to go ahead and undo that one just to get this thing done the idea you're gonna open it up round it out a bit and then push it back in on itself and using this down here pushing straight down so it don't bend up anything. I'll take my thumb and I'll start working it down. And you really want to have gloves so if your hand slips or something happens, um, you don't skewer a finger or really mess yourself up. There's no cool way to do this. thumbs and just work your way around. Once you start to really invert it, you can always flip it around a little bit and uh, pull it from the inside as well. So just work at it. It's going to take some time. Shred it out. Whatever you got. Now you can form these as long as you want them, or as short as you want them. You can always open that little thing down there a little bit bigger or make it smaller, depending on what you are trying to capture. At this point, it's all up to you. But still early on in the building phase, so it can be a little bit rough. You can go back through and uh, Rebend it, make it look pretty later on. All right. Now, I don't want to go too far with this one just yet until I get the other side formed up a little bit. Because in the end, uh, you're going to have this middle section. It needs to be a little symmetrical. So let's go ahead and start on this end and do that one the same way.
have it one side and you can close those off a little bit or open them up to your heart's desire almost half done let's go ahead and seal up the other end invert the tunnels as much as we can and then uh, open our access panel so we can finish it off Right. That is a lot of J-hooks. Four more to put on with the hinge for the access panel. But uh, that's almost at an end. Let's go ahead and uh, don the gloves again. And we'll attempt to invert these as much as possible. But uh, you might not get very far. You might have to go ahead and make the access, access panel to be able to uh, push and manipulate it the way we need to. A little bit of bow, that didn't bow too much, too much further in. Leave that there for just a moment. Let's see if I can't give a little more rigidity by opening up the other side. At this point, it's just kind of touch and go. Push and pull where you can. This bin's just right for you. Must be look good, doesn't it? All right. Before I push this down any further, because this crease and how it's bending, I'm gonna go ahead and open my access panel here on top. And uh, the main idea with this is that uh, you don't want to make it so large that you start messing with the uh, rigidity of the structure. Uh, a lot of these bars going all the way around are giving it its form. So let's go ahead and we'll cut this thing out. The idea is that the door is going to be a half inch uh, over all the way around this thing. So it'll be a half inch all the way around larger than the hole you're cutting. So have some scraps ready. Uh, I'm going to be using the galvanized tin. Sometimes I actually use pieces of rubber, pieces of old road cone, things like that to make the doors. But whatever you've got, make a few of these, you'll have some scrap. Works out real well.
you go. A little piece for another project. Now before I go and affix a top, or rather a door on this, I want to go and uh, do all of my bending. Kind of finish this out as much as possible when something's not in the way. So the gloves on again. This is where you're going to shore it up and kind of make it look nice and pretty. If you're going to modify the uh, entrance size, this is also a good time to do that. Put your push out on that seam. And uh, either you can have a sharp end on the end here, or you can kind of bunt it like that. And uh, the bunting fixes a lot of that crease. Push out real well. Make sure we have those nice long funnels that both guide the crawfish in as well as keep them from finding the way out. And a lot of times I'll actually have the pliers up inside of here. I'll be clipping and making sure that my cones are just right and the entrance sizes are just right. Now, depending on what state you're in, uh, you need to pay attention to the size of this trap. To the materials, um, especially here in Texas with minnow traps and things like that, uh, you can only have a certain size uh, entrance for different kinds of prey. So make sure that you are up to date, especially if you do some traveling and take your traps into another state, another area. Double check, double check, double check. Always. Alright. to look normal. Beginning to. And that's where we're at right now. Pretty sweet, huh? Okay. At this point, I need to go ahead and cut out an access hatch. And uh, like I just mentioned, it's going to overlap all the way around the door, even for the hinge, a one half inch. You can go ahead and overlay it one inch if you want to. But this is both to keep your bait inside as well as to keep the critters from being able to get inside that are trying to eat your food. So here's the door I've gone ahead and cut out. And make sure again that it's overlapping at least a half inch over the opening that you've cut for your trap. Uh, I've gone ahead and made it a little bit longer on the end of the door so it's actually a full inch maybe that'll make it a little bit more uh, structurally sound i've been back here on the hinge point i'm making sure that the hinge actually allows this door to go over the curvature of the trap it's going to allow for a better seal but this is where i run into a few issues and uh, you're gonna have to use the pliers in a way that they weren't really designed so with these pliers usually you're going to go ahead and take the double tines and that's what's going to wrap around and I set those back behind whatever I'm fastening together but this bunt end is too big to go through the half inch uh, so what we're going to do is push the smaller end through taking care to make sure that it wraps around as much as possible to get the seal we want and then you cross your fingers so there you go one part of your hinge is right there. I'm going to do uh, both sides first, and I'll add a few in the middle to uh, reinforce. And there we go, guys. Inch plate in place. I'm going to put some bungee on there. So I buy my bungee cord in bulk, uh, but any old cheap bungee cord will work. You could even use uh, clips. Some people like to use zip ties, but I find that to be pretty wasteful. And this works out for me as long as it's keeping it uh, clothes. And I like to do this because, well, 
you have everything attached to your trap, you can't ever lose anything. And that's important to me. I don't ever want to lose anything. So I'm just going to put a simple overhand knot on this right now. Yeah, it might take a little bit of calibration. You might have to shift things a little bit back and forth just to make sure that you've got the right uh, the right tension and have it in the right area. The idea is that the uh, door will shut and open without anything in the way. All right. So with my tension right there, cut this stuff. Now, we're about to go and set this trap out. And uh, as a side note, if you haven't already seen the sweat pouring off my back, I'll go ahead and give you all that want to come visit Texas in the summer a word of warning. Don't come to South Texas in the summer <laughs> unless you're going to the beach uh, or you have a lot of air conditioners. Uh, it is not even 8 o'clock in the morning right now and it's already 90 degrees. So this is uh, killer heat. So let's check this thing out. That's all the way. Good seal. Nothing's coming out of there. Take your excess once you've tightened it up. Cut it off. Nice and pretty. And the last thing we really need to do with this now is to put a line and tag on it and then bait it up. We'll do that now. So the line we're going to be using to tie this off is 550 paracord because uh, I've got some monsters down in my creek now, especially after this flooding we've had down here in Texas. Now I'd advise you to go ahead and use several pieces of the mesh to implement in your knot. So you don't want to just tie it onto one piece, or if you get this thing hung up and have to put some pressure on it and that breaks, uh, you don't want to lose your trap. I'm going to use a half hitch to tie this off, it's a securing knot. And I'd also say go ahead and look at where I'm putting this knot, because uh, every day or several times a day you'll be pulling this trap in and you want to be able to drag it on the bottom of uh, whatever your water is without it getting caught up. So it works out pretty well. Now downsides to this trap has to do with the size of mesh. You see most of my videos I go ahead and I throw dried dog food just straight in the trap. This is too big. The dog food gets a little soft, comes right out. So what I do to get over that is to use a kind of an old sock or my favorite is an onion bag or a garlic bag. Put a handful of that in there, tie it off, chunk the bag inside, problem solved. Uh, which the last thing to mention is to make sure that you are following all your laws and regulations, federal and local. Uh, make sure your gear tags, if your state requires them, are up to date and have the appropriate information on them. So we're going to go ahead and throw this thing out. But there is your under $5 crawfish trap. Custom built. Definitely, definitely durable. I'm about to show you just how efficient it is. So let's catch some crawfish. Job number one. See how we do. This time last week, where we're standing was under 10 foot of water at least. And so, uh, kind of the population dynamics has changed my speed quite a bit. Step number two, go ahead and check these here in a couple hours, we'll have some good luck, I think it's time for us to go and dry off, this is gross. Alright, so it's been a couple hours, first trap. slippery. But check that out. Only three or four crawfish, but those are all perch and uh, real grand perch. Some bluegills. Talk about a successful trap. Definitely after it's flooded, we've got some uh, different kind of creatures running about. Let's let these guys go. Check the other trap. Trap number two in the shallows. Well, 
couple hours. No keeper crawfish, but uh, some more minnows, bluegill, and uh, some more of those cichlids, those Rio Grande perch. Uh, guys, there's your custom crawfish trap. Like and subscribe, and as always, till next time. Well, our trap's been out for the better part of a day, and so I wanted to show you what it's caught. Uh, there's some pretty unique stuff in this creek, especially this year. But take a look at this. This is what we call a Rio Grande perch. It's actually a cichlid. Beautiful little fish. Caught the first one in this creek this year. And uh, now if you're watching the videos, I'm catching nothing but them. They have somehow been able to displace uh, my regular perch or the bluegill or sunfish or whatever you call them. Uh, we have... Our traditional crawfish, and you've seen videos of these. This is a red swamp crawfish. It's kind of interesting this year. Last year we had some of the blues in here, and uh, we've not caught a single blue this year at all. So that tells you that uh, populations can change quite a bit. Nope, nope, don't get me. How? Oh, I was wrong. He got me. Okay. And check out this little guy. <laughs> that is a uh, baby catfish. And so you can catch some real strange stuff in these traps and bycatch, but uh, you need to make sure that you are only harvesting what is legal to harvest. So with this video, just to show you kind of uh, what we catch and how this trap works, we're going to go ahead and return all these guys to the waters at this time and let them get a little bigger. We'll catch them next time. Thanks for watching, guys.